gonna are you gonna play the Bearcat song or? Oh uh, no, I, I was just gonna add it in post. Do you want me to? Okay, so like, how should I open then? Just like, just do your normal thing, but then rename just be like, all right. Yeah, well, just, Bearcats Country Radio. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that. Do Bearcats Country Radio. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Edit this okay. out. Do you want me to play this? I can pull it up real quick. Wait, hold on. I'm just trying to get a little more material ready. Still, yeah. I want to have one more. My internet's being really slow today. That's all right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> present my. Okay. Don, you ready? You want me to count you down? <clears throat> yeah, I'm ready. Just clap again yeah. or something. All right, three, two, one. Uh, Steve, for us, worth that's not really. I couldn't really hear that. Uh, maybe you just could... like add it in. Okay. Yeah. Add it in the intro. It wasn't really that's coming. Uh, it's annoying. But anyway, all right. I'll, I'll just start. Let's let's just recount it down. Ready? Three, two, one. All right, fellas, welcome to Bearcats Country Radio, where we're going to talk about. Woo! The number one baseball team in Cincinnati, the 30-win Cincinnati Bearcats, projected to finish last in the Big 12, and they are fourth in the Big 12 with 30 wins and 16 in conference. They have one more series to go, and right now they are projected to make the the NCAA tournament as an at-large for the first time since the 1970s. I'm Donnie. We're going to talk exclusively about this very good Cincinnati baseball team today. Uh, Steve. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, just to celebrate, we've got, you know, the new system, so we might as well put it on, put it on the screen. Bearcats baseball, baby. Bearcats. How about that? How about these cats? Except 30 the wins. Team in Cincinnati. How yeah. about them? 30 wins. Uh, first time wow. the Bearcats have won 30 since the 2019 season. Um, be, you got to be excited about what this team's doing right now. Really putting on for the city of Cincinnati. Yeah, absolutely, fellas. Like what Donnie said earlier, they're projected to finish last in the Big 12. Yeah, go ahead, Don. No, I wanted to Never mind. introduce you. I was I should have told you this the other time. I, uh, I, I've i heard that introducing both of you at the same time is very confusing. So uh, now it's even worse that I'm jumping all over you. But <laughs> we got Steve and we got Rob. That's Rob there for you. Yeah, so like I said earlier, the Bearcats, like what you said earlier, Donnie, the Bearcats were projected to finish dead last in the Big 12 this year by Baseball America, one of the finest baseball publications in all the land. As of right now, I believe they sit in fourth place in the Big 12 um, with a big series left against the first place Oklahoma Sooners who already have the Big 12 regular season title wrapped up and locked up. But uh, Number 12 in the country is Oklahoma, but they come to the stadium formerly known as March Shot Stadium for a big weekend tilly with our Bearcats. UC sitting pretty in the catbird seat. A lot of things to like about this Bearcats team, fellas. Yes, sir. And I, I, I'm pretty happy with what we've seen from this year. You know, they, the coach Fischel talked about how this team has been uh, negatively called a softball team with the way they play. You know, they Ooh. jump on pitches and they try to really, you know, run pitchers out of games, but it's working for them. And, uh, to be kind of serious here, as a Bearcats fan, it's pretty cool to see that out of the four newcomers, we are going to – we've already secured that we will finish first out of all, all of those four. Houston and BYU are not even going to make the tournament. 
and UCF kind of crumbled in, in conference play. So it's been good to see what they've done. And uh, I'm really impressed with Coach Bishop. Maybe we should have him on the show, you know, maybe a oh, high yeah. time that a coach joins this show. Would love that. Um, speaking of UCF, the Bearcats took two or three from the uh, Citronauts in Orlando. Uh, right now, Baseball America has them sitting, I believe, as the number 64 team, the last four in. So they have an outside shot of making it in, depending on how the games break for them. Um, but there's a lot of like about these Bearcats team. Like I said earlier, Josh Cross, number 41, fun infielder, leads the team with 16 dongs, batting a cool 321. Center fielder Josh Hageman batting 361, 22 RBIs. Let's go, fellas. Let's go. What about Carrington Cross and Loudon Brooks, two of the middle yeah. boppers in that Bearcat lineup? And I want to bring up this weekend's starters. We don't have – so apparently um, you, you boys have let me know that the weekend weather forecast in Cincinnati looks absolutely horrendous. So yes. they've moved this series to a Thursday doubleheader and a Friday game three. Very interesting. Um you would probably have hoped like they would have been able to play all three, but Don, when I give you the names Nathan Taylor and Tommy Bobo, what do those names say to you? Man, those those names just make me full of Bearcat pride. Let me tell you what. Dogs. <laughs> they have been pretty good this year. Like Rob, I, I don't know if you can pull them up real quick. Yeah, but, I got them. Uh, Bo, uh, you know Nathan, Nathan Taylor, like he's been our Saturday starter most of the time, and he's been mm -hmm. pretty clutch for us. And um, I also want to call out too. The first time we've won four straight conference series in at least eight years, if not longer. I know the stat that was since 2016 that we had won three consecutive conference series. I don't know if there's been another time that we've won four consecutive conference series. Like this program has been kind of down in the dumps for a while. And even though we had 2019, it's good to see them actually like being good throughout the regular season and maybe getting an at-large chance done. I want you to hit us with that that stat that you put in the group chat the other night. What was that? About the tournament, about how a oh. we could be, be potentially making some history. Yeah, well, we, we weren't even sure when if we'd ever made it as an at-large. And it looked like we made it uh, between like a 13-year stretch from like the 60s into the 70s. We did make it like six times. So we had a pretty solid team at that point. Uh, and I think the last time was like 1974 or something. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we were in at large because we didn't win the conference that year. So it would have had to be. I, I don't know how they did it, did it back then exactly. I'm sure it was slightly different. Uh, but in 2019, we were in the tournament, but that was after that incredible run in the conference uh, conference tournament. So uh, huge accomplishment in, with, with the modern game of baseball with how how uh, how different it is compared to you know 50 years ago. Yeah, that, that 2019 team, they won the American Athletic Conference Championship. I believe that team had Joey Weimer on it, and I think maybe Ryan Noda. Um, but they got a bad draw, really. They went, they got drawn in the Corvallis Regional, yeah. uh, where Oregon State plays. And uh, Oregon State was in that uh, regional, obviously, and they had some guy named Adley Rutschman as their catcher. And the uh, Bearcats went out and upset them. Um, so there you go. So the Bearcats, the last time they were in the tournament, have made some fireworks. I know we're, we're talking big dreams right now. you got to get into the tournament first, but the way the, the Bearcats are sitting, they're sitting pretty. Uh, Steve, to kind of uh, go back, you're asking about the starting pitchers. Nathan Taylor right now leads the start as the, the three starters that you have. For, for those uh, listening, uh, typically you, you play like a week. Your weekend series is like your as your, the bulk of your games. You have three starters. Nathan Taylor, I believe he's the Friday starter. He Right now he's 8-1 and one with a 537 ERA, which isn't bad for college baseball. Uh, the ball gets put in play a lot more in college baseball, for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, Tommy Boba, he's kind of the Saturday guy. He's 5-5 five and five with a 568 ERA. And Seth Logue, I believe he's a freshman. Uh, he's sitting at 2-4 and four with a 725 ERA, but I'm pretty sure he was a pretty highly touted prospect coming out of high school. Um, so there's a lot to like about this pitching staff right now. They're getting help from their bullpen. Griffin Hugus is a name that I've recognized. Carson Marsh, another guy. Um, and then Christian Michelle, he's a two-way player. He pitches out of the pen, but also is a starting shortstop on times. So a good infielder. Um, so yeah, a lot to like about these boys. A lot of like, lots of like. Very excited. Steve, did this team have as many antics as that 2019 team had? When I think of them, I remember doing the uh, 
the the water shot ski shots and the uh yeah joey weimer every time he would hit a double he'd have that sick pop-up slide straight into the guitar, the guitar. yeah um to be honest i don't think they do uh i yeah. think it's kind of just their game is they just play ball but they do have the fun thing which i think the 2019 team did where whenever they hit a home run the whole team comes out of the dugout and then they do, they all jump at the same time and do the boom cheer so nice um and then the player the player who hit the home run gets to do something fun like i saw um max hegeman hit a home run last week and then did the uh through the legs uh dunk with his helmet uh and all the players got excited so um it's listen boys college baseball is a lot of fun and if you've never watched a college baseball series this is a great series to watch definitely get on espn or if you're in the cincinnati area Go, go to UC Baseball Stadium. Tickets are less than ten dollars. Like you know, you're yeah. gonna watch two, three great games for less than thirty dollars. They have beer at the stadium. It's a pretty good deal, and you get to watch a two thirty baseball game on a Friday. And uh, on, a, on a Thursday, the most, the yeah. most so, so, in Cincinnati. No, so if you sign if you sign up for the uh, the email alerts from the UC Athletic Department, I'm not sure if they changed this yet, but I got an email earlier this week. Um, they were offering one dollar general admission tickets to Saturday's game. Obviously, not playing the game on Saturday anymore, so maybe that carries over to Friday's game. Who knows? But yes, you can buy a ticket to a college sporting event in Cincinnati, Ohio, for one dollar if you decide to. That's pretty good, folks. Not bad. Not bad. Put them on this. I think the last two things I think that are kind of cool uh, with 16 wins. Uh, and so in the win column, we're only one game back from Oklahoma State in, with 17 wins at second place. And if you've looked at how the Big 12 does their tournament, the top two seeds get uh, first round buys. And could think if, if this series goes our way and things fall our way ahead of us, uh, we could have a first round buy. But that is still in play. We probably would need to sweep uh, Oklahoma, which is unlikely. They're, you know, they're the best team in the conference. But, hey, the boys are hot. Uh and it's going to be fun to watch. The last note I'm going to going to make is the projection I saw that did have us in. I think there were two two different projections that had us in the same region, both in the uh, playing Indiana State uh, in their region. Uh, yeah. Would love a chance for the uh, for the the baseball Bearcats to get some revenge for the Bearcats. Uh, yes. Basketball Bearcats. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I've got the Baseball America projections pulled up right now. They have us in the Terre Haute region. Indiana State is the one seed. Uh, the NC State Wolfpack is the two seed. Our Cincinnati Bearcats as the three seed. And the projected champion out of the MAC, the Bowling Green State University Falcons, mm. is the four seed. Nice. That's a that's a pretty loaded uh, Midwest field save for NC State. They're kind of. So, uh, Wild card. I want I want to add this too, fellas. Xavier and Wright State are also projected to make the tournament as well. I wonder when the last time was that four teams from the state of Ohio could potentially make the NCAA baseball tournament. And if that's the case, why not just you know put all the Ohio teams in the same region and just make it like the love Cincinnati it. region or something? You know, I would love thought. nothing. That's like a great Rob. You brought up a great point that I've forgotten that I had, um, and it's a pretty easy take. But uh, yeah. UC hosting a regional would just be absolutely amazing. Like that would be a, like, so, you know, we talk about, I've, I think we've talked about like hosting conference tournaments before. And like, if say the city of Cincinnati were to host like the American conference basketball tournament, you would go right. Like it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun sporting event. And it's like, you know, you just get, get to go to all the games in your city. If there was a regional in Cincy at, uh, I kind of wonder if they try to get that. I, I mean, I guess not. They would probably not have enough fans to move it to GABP. But if the Reds were out of town like that weekend and they try to get that to GABP, that'd be pretty cool. But still being on campus would be, like, ideal, right? They, so, would, they, they may, might play it at Prasco if that's the case because the Big East tournament this weekend or this next week is at Prasco. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play at Prasco. That seems like a Xavier home field kind of thing. you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> it does but, give Xavier vibes. Yeah, so – I don't know. I mean, I would still love, though, to host a regional one day. And, you know, with this new coach, anything is possible. Yeah. He's, he's, he's had success at every level he's been to. Or coach yeah. that. All right. So now we've talked about the good team in Cincinnati. It's time to talk about the bad one. Uh, if you've made it 15 minutes into this podcast or, or whatever it is, and, uh, you know, you were maybe hoping that we wouldn't touch on the Reds. We are going to touch on the Reds. This is a Reds podcast. And unfortunately, we, we, we're kind of our, our knowledge has been exhausted after uh, a little over 10 minutes talking about the Bearcats baseball. Uh, we are good fans. Uh, that's yeah. not bad. Uh, 
we're gonna we're gonna grow the game. You know, if women's basketball can grow, so can college baseball. How's how's that? I it's like ripe, that. ripe. <laughs> yeah. So okay, the Reds have lost. What is it now? 12, 12 of fourteen. Yeah. Uh, not great. We were three or four games over five hundred at one point. Uh, felt like the season was, you know, not. We we knew we had the injury problems. We knew we were kind of maybe even at that point playing a little above our ability. We're certainly playing below our ability now. Uh, there was a very frustrating stretch where we lost eight straight, and we looked completely anemic this the entire time. Uh, we won one game, and and we won one game in this Arizona series. But really, since that eight game losing streak, I feel like we've we've played better on offense. We weren't totally clueless and like scoring. I think we scored something like uh, like five runs across. You know, it, it was not good. It was not very many runs. We're doing a little better now, but we just keep losing. We're one in ten in one run games. Quite the change from last year. Where, where do we go from here? What, Steve? Talk me off the ledge, or maybe keep me on it. Jump, jump with me. What, what's going on? Here's a stat for you: the Reds are one and zero in baseball games that I have attended in the regular season this year. So I did go. go to Tuesday night's win over the oh, Arizona gosh. Diamondbacks in. Chase Field. Um, actually, that another interesting stat. First time the Reds had scored more than five runs since that uh, April 27th Saturday win uh, in Texas. Like that just puts a capper on how like bad our offense has been. And to be honest, I think it's kind of. Been, I'm just looking at the schedule now. I think it's kind of been poor since the Phillies series. Like you know, we've had we had a couple of good nights there, but I think you know facing Ranger and Wheeler. Like I kind of. Uh, think of pitching is like you you face a couple a couple of good starters and then everything just seems to like that those two starters are so good that they break your confidence and they didn't score a run against either Wheeler or uh, uh, or uh, Suarez and then you know Darvish came back against them and he was all right still scored four runs that that night but still just not what you want from that start and then. Um, you know, the, the Orioles, they put out probably their three best current starters right now in uh, Means and uh, – oh, shit, I'm forgetting who the Friday starter was. But Kramer is not one of their best starters, though, and he still made us look like chopped liver. So it was th- like that whole series and then, you know, having to f- watch them face Slade Ciccone twice and not r- see them perform well against him is just very frustrating. Um, it's – and then, like, you know, they, of course, they beat Logan Webb on Friday night and then lose the other two games. So, um, but you're right, Don. I think it's just, unfortunately, right now, the luck is turning against us. All these injuries we've had, you mentioned the one in 10 and one run games. Um, you know, you're on a 10 game West Coast swing and you've won two total games so far. Um, and you, you're going into LA. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to ask you guys, you know, what's the confidence meter right now in this team? Like, yeah. I mean, you're going, to Chavez Ravine for four against one of the hotter teams in baseball. It's just I I to be honest, I just don't feel good. And I'm I try to be as positive as I can at all times. And it's just it's just not happening for me right now. So guys, uh like we're all we're all in agreement here in this podcast. The 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 block of the schedule that we thought was going to be the, the the toughest stretch of the season, starting with the April twenty second game against the Phillies at home going all the way to the last home game on May 26th against the Dodgers. That's a stretch of 32 games. As of right now, through those 32 games, we are 6-16 and with 10 games left to play. Uh, Obviously, injuries have, you know, not really decimated the team, but have hindered the team quite a bit. Uh, We've got like four of our key contributors on the IL right now. any given night, it seems like we're rolling out four or five guys, maybe six guys that are batting just above 200 or below 200. Uh, my, as of right now, if we keep playing the way we're playing, I don't really have a whole lot of high hopes for this team. Maybe we'll turn it around. Who knows? Um, but there's really not a whole lot to be optimistic about besides maybe the starting pitching. The starting pitching has been okay. Um, but as far as, you know, waking the bats up and pushing runs across, that's not looking too, too great. Yeah. Um, I'm just pulling up some record stats cause I like record stats. Um, so 
if you look at our expected win loss on uh, the Pythagorean uh, win theorem, uh, which is, you know, you take your run differential and uh, you use that to kind of see what, you, how bad you, how, what your record really should be if you played all of your games based on the run differential. Um, and it's pretty impressive that even though the Reds have lost, uh, you know, 14 of their last, uh, 12 of their last 14 games and they've gotten blown out in a couple of those, that uh, their Pythagorean win theorem or their expected win loss is 21 and 22 and their run differential is minus three. They did build build that up at the start of the season. They had some good wins and, uh, you know, were able to put some runs on the board, but it is still kind of surprising, honestly. And if you think about it, after the Tuesday night game, it was plus one. So, uh, mm-hmm. oh, no, I'm no, I'm sorry. That's bad, Matt. It was, it was minus two. Minus two. Yeah. Uh, I'm really making us UC uh, people look good here. Um, Public school math, baby. You know, but it, Rob, it's just like I, I see why people are hating right now. And I get it. Like, I'm, but I, if you've noticed, I have not really been posting that much on the yeah. account because it's hard to be posting right now. No <laughs> doubt. There's yeah, nothing it, good happening. No, it, it, they're, they're very frustrating to watch right now. I get it. I, I I see a lot of people on Twitter like calling for the firing of David Bell. Like the problems this team are this team's having are not like David Bell problems. I it's the fact that they're rolling out bench players every night. That's basically I I I would say like maybe a quadruple A lineup night in and night out, it seems like for the most part. Obviously with the exception of like Ellie and Steer and those guys and Fraley. Um but yeah, the, you're you're seeing what the Reds are playing with right now. There's not a whole lot in the farm system for them to call up. I mean, they call it up Capel and Herta Bees, um, but how much those guys are really going to contribute? They're not. They don't have the hype that you know Ellie and McLean and Marte had when they got called up last year. The farm system, for the most part, I wouldn't say it's depleted, but a lot of it's sitting in Single A Dayton right now. They just called up Rhett Ladder to Double A. Uh, the, the Reds are playing with kind of a shit deck right now, fellas. It's basically what it's boiled down to. And I feel like the way this lineup and roster was constructed, they weren't equipped to handle four key pieces going down. Probably any lineup of baseballs like that. One piece here, two pieces there. Yeah. But um, it's, it's, they're not equipped for this right now. I don't think personally. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how different we felt. Like in the off season, we thought we had all this depth. We let some guys walk, you know, guys like guys that could help the team right now. Hey, Joey Votto couldn't hurt you. Uh, Kevin Newman, even uh, Kevin Newman killed us. Kind of let walk. It's like, ah, we got so much depth. We're going to be great. Yeah. He he got his revenge. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you've got guys kind of underperforming when you, uh, that that were expected to be contributors. Uh, Christian Encarnacion Strand, when he was healthy, wasn't playing that great. Uh, Will Benson has been striking out like crazy. He's had his moments here and there. Uh, but, you know, the guys that even are healthy haven't really been performing up to snuff. John India has not been quite as good as he's, he, as we would like from him. Uh, you know, Ellie De La Cruz can't carry this, this entire team. And Ellie's probably the only te- only reason we aren't, you know, e- even in worse spot. Yeah. Well, let, so, me, let me give you a, another quick record stat. Um, and it's extra frustrating because of how good the pitching's been. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're exactly right. And our starters have been good. And lately it's been the bullpen. It's kind of a reverse from last year where the bullpen was kind of nails all year last year. The bullpen like has not been as nails as we needed to be when the offense is not really producing. Like if you think about Wednesday's game, you know, the series wrap up against Arizona, you get seven strong innings from Andrew Abbott, only gives up one run, but your offense is only get, able to give him one run of support. And you lose in the eighth inning when Fernando Cruz – it seems like the Diamondbacks may have uh, just kind of said, don't swing at the splitter and just let him throw fastballs to you um, because that's kind of what they, what they did. Like they, they scored runs on him both, both times he was out in that series. And that kind of makes me worried a little bit about what other teams might have on him if the Diamondbacks were able to figure that out. So um, it it's just like, it, it's, uh, there was a, a great post that a, a few years ago that somebody put out where it's like a slider meme and you turn on the pitching, the, the, the good starting pitching, you turn on the bullpen and then the offense and you try to turn on the offense, but then the, it goes all, off. none, none of the, the, basically the meme is visual meme for the part of my take fans. Uh, none of the buttons are all on at the same time. And it's just unfortunate right now because um 
And here's the other thing, too. I wanted to get to this stat real quick. Um, this is on MLB.com, by the way. So uh, they have, you know, your stat, your record against teams uh, over 500. Uh, and the Reds have a 6-13 and 13 record against teams over 500. But what that says to me is that their record right now is 18 and 25. They're 12 and 12 against teams that are under 500. You you can be like, you know, okay, well, we've got to like, you know, we're, we're kind of expecting that we're not going to be that great against some of these bad teams. And I understand it's baseball, professional baseball. All these players are relatively at the same level. And, you know, six of our wins this year came against the White Sox and the Angels. But it's still just like really disheartening when you can't beat the teams that you're supposed to beat or that are at your level. And I understand that, you know, we've like maybe if the Dimebacks continue to win, they'll go over that and then we'll ch- it'll, it'll change. But uh, you just lost five out of six to the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team who I kind of follow now just because I live in the area. And I don't think they, they kind of caught magic last year in, in September and October. I don't really know if they are as good as what their postseason run was last year. And it's just disheartening to know, to see what that team is doing on a day-to-day basis because you live in the, the area and then your team <laughs> comes in and loses five out of six against them. It's just, it's just tough, man. Well, I think there's some silver lining to this too, because you know how bad and how poor the Reds play on the West coast and they're getting all this West coast stuff out of the way right here, right now. Um, I think it's making a lot, Make, making a lot of runway for a lot of improvement later in the season, getting all this West Coast superstition bullshit out of the way right now. But let me ask you this, Don. Um, I, I I put the the panic button button question into the group chat, and I don't think like I mean it's May. You know, we got Kirk Herbstreit already given up on the season, um, <laughs> and it's it, it's just disheartening, but. I am kind of wondering, though, Rob, like, how bad does it have to get for us three, like some of the more positive people, you know, on Red's Twitter to really for it to really like tank. Right. Like for us to really say like, oh, it like they just might not be good. Like, uh, Don, uh, why don't you give us your thoughts real quick and then, Rob, you go ahead. I think Dom might be lagging behind a little bit. I know coming up that we have St. Louis, Chicago, Colorado, and another Tilly with the Cubs uh, after this Dodgers series. I think that stretch of 9, 12, 13, 40, 16 games is really going to tell like how how good this group of this crop of guys they have right now are. Um, but then again, I'm also trying to keep you know perspective that they're missing four very key pieces out of this lineup. It's almost half your lineup. The guys you were counting on to be productive. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's opportune timing, right? Rob, just to say like, okay, yeah, these guys are out, but, and, you know, I, maybe I'm holding it too much against them to not be winning with, with those guys, but I still felt like, you know, you still have four, five, six decent to good guys in that lineup. And, uh, you know, and the, I feel like this whole losing streak too, this is still part and parcel the, the time where we cut my, or Mike Ford uh, got his release from the Reds uh, in Louisville uh, mm-hmm. came back. D, they finally like made a move to send down Martini and Bubba Thompson. Uh, so it's just, it's just been frustrating. It feels like they're not like this front office is kind of just, you know, letting this happen and they're just not really giving these these guys a full opportunity to win and maybe i'm being too harsh you know i'm i try to be the positive guy but it seems like the the moves around the team could have been done better to try and give them a full 26 every night to go because how many games have they played a man down this year probably like 12 already with they probably yeah 75 percent of their games probably yeah. Well, I guess you could say all their games because they haven't played with Marte yet, and they haven't played with McLean yet. So I'm all sorry, their no. games, they're, they're playing with two men down. Well, you're <laughs> right, but Don, like you know what I mean, though. Like, uh, like they they they're playing with 26 guys, but they know that two guys like can't go that night. And I understand you don't want to just put a bunch of guys on the IL just to put guys on the IL, but like, I just 
it's been six years of doing this like you know oh yeah we we don't want to give him 10 days but like they spend seven days like i don't know talk me off the ledge yeah so i'm i think i'm back uh sorry i had some some tech yeah, problems there no uh, you're good i i think the biggest thing there so the, you're making me think of all the all the david bell criticism right and uh i don't even know if that's something he decides really uh like when a guy goes on the il or doesn't uh i know he's kind of the head man in charge as far as the clubhouse and the locker and you know the in the dugout uh but is that that personnel decision who makes that uh you know people want to take david bell's head when uh players aren't playing well but i don't know what he's supposed to do about that and he's given the roster he's dealt with uh you know that's not his decision some of this stuff maybe i I'm not sure if he, if if you can. I, I do want to maybe like blame him on that a little bit. Like he should, he probably knows his players at least. And if someone's if you know whoever's making the decision, say Crawl is the one that actually makes the decision, he's probably working with Bell and said, hey, you know, Jake Fraley's been sick for a couple days now. He's he looks really bad. You think he's gonna be like ready to hit at a high level within like a couple days? Or at this point, you know, we can retroactively put him on the IL, give him eight more days. Uh, is that you know? I think maybe that's maybe the best move, Dave. And if if, if Bell's not saying, uh, I don't know. That's the classic, like, every player, if you ask him, uh, is going to say, oh, I'm ready to go. I'll be ready tomorrow. Uh, and if if Bell isn't the one that can figure out well, that's not actually the case, who is? I don't know. Yeah, it's – I don't know. It's, it's just frustrating. And, like, it seems – you know, everything goes wrong on a losing streak, but it seems like for a good two and a half weeks now, like literally everything possible, like every baseball balance has gone against the Reds. <laughs> like, I I don't know. I hate being like con- consistently down, but it's it's hard not to be right now, unfortunately. Well, and you are it right. It's like- been a lot of it's been about a lot of bad luck. There are a couple of those games I do think we should have won, especially in this like most recent stretch. Um, the offense is starting to play a slightly better. Uh, like Candelaria looks great. Stevenson's looked solid. Steer's been solid. Fairchild looks great against lefties. Fraley looks great against righties. Um, we need more righty bats that can hit well against lefties. That's definitely for sure. Uh, quick, quickly losing TJ Friedel certainly doesn't help. Uh, that was just awful luck. Uh, and man, I don't know. I'm counting down the days till Marte's back, I guess. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, like 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 I like I've been kind of saying before, fellas, like they're not really playing with a full deck right now, and I'm not sure how much more they can do with what they have, um, as as far as like ownership or management getting involved and trying to make a trade or whatever. But you know, you look at this lineup, like what pieces are available to deal, who can they get for guys out there? I, I just think they're kind of stuck with what they have personally. That's the other thing I don't I don't think all the fans realize is it's like, well, what do you want them to do? Are, are yeah. we gonna get back into the whole, well, the Reds should be in the Juan Soto mix? Like who are we gonna who are we gonna trade for in May? Like that's not and then there's no free agents out there. We don't really have anyone hanging out in, in the minor leagues. They did a great yeah. job getting a lot of great young players into the organization or into the you know the big league club in the last year. But uh like any farm system you know even the best you know it's hard to kind of uh replete those i guess uh and this was like kind of the thing that we whispered whispered about but didn't really want to like you know talk about was the sophomore slump like and yeah there's a couple of these guys too that you know obviously mclean and Marte just aren't playing but uh steers had a couple down games benson has not really produced as much as he did last year um, you know, Ellie's probably been the only guy that has really been like producing like more often than not for this team and at historic like, rates. Yes, yes, for sure. And we should definitely talk about Ellie at some point. But it's like it, it feels like they just kind of all went through a collective slump together. And um, I like that you know the pitchers were not down on them. Like Graham Ashcraft was quoted as saying, you know, these guys come in here first and leave last. Like it's not their fault. They're just getting some shit luck right now. And Mike Ford was talking about that too, how every, like you know, all the luck has kind of gone against the Reds. And uh, it, it does feel like kind of dire right now. But again, it's May. They have that expected win loss record of 21 and 22. And I think like, you know, if you look at the national projections for this team, like we, I jokingly bookmarked the baseball is dead, like, uh, postseason picks because none of them had the reds in it and 
may like you know a lot of national writers and national people were not as high on the Reds as we were. So maybe it's yeah. us fans just putting these expectations on ourselves. Um, but we saw how good they were last year. And we we're like, okay, yeah, just go do that again. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm not ready to give up just yet. It's it's really disheartening some nights, but just the fact that they're only two and a half games out of that final wild card spot like makes you remember, okay, it's May. It is a rough stretch. Hopefully, because we're not banking on easy stretches anymore, as we've talked about on this. Yeah. Show. Not in the, no longer banking on those, but I I do feel like once this schedule, the strength of schedule gets a little easier, they will be able to take advantage because they are a better baseball team than what they play, but I think they've been on a, a shit run of offense and they've faced a lot of good starting pitchers. If you think about it, like just think about all the, all the names they've faced within this run. Like, you know, you got Darvish, Suarez, uh, yeah. Wheeler, uh, road Zach Gallen, even though he's not very good, he's still, he still kind of is Zach Gallen, uh, Jordan Montgomery twice, Slade Sacconi, who apparently has thrown, uh, started, with two perfect innings in five straight games. Um, I didn't know that, uh, you know, Musgrove too. They've been, they've faced a lot of good pitchers, like uh, 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 means as well. Yeah. It's been a lot of like good pitchers on this run. And it's not going to get any easier looking ahead to the Dodgers series. They got Tyler glass. Now big maple Paxton, Walker Buehler and Yashimo Yamamoto. According to <laughs> so that's, they're like the four best pitchers in baseball right now, it seems like. Or the, they're, they're basically the best rotation in baseball right now, at least. Yeah. And then they're you coming out. Otani. Yeah. And, and Chavez Ravine. Otani, Teoscar Hernandez, Mookie Betts, Will Smith. Like, it just the uh, Dodgers are unfair. Break up the Dodgers. Yeah, they're not fair. The timing of this rough stretch, both hitting and injuries, like the players that are healthier, it's not hitting well. and that, But all that timing up with this very, very good stretch of – teams is is brutal uh and so the way you know if you break up the season into one or two month chunks you know as we get guys healthy as guys hopefully at least get back to normal levels of hitting if not get hot uh we gotta start winning some games uh you know hey even assume maybe steal one or two uh, two being great and at the dodgers come back home uh schedule starts to get slightly easier i guess uh but you got to start racking up some wins, uh, and you got to do that before everyone really gets healthy. You can't wait around for Friedel to get back. You can't really wait around for Marte to get back. Uh, we got to start making some moves before then, and the boys got to get hot. And that's not a much, not much else to it. Uh, pitching's been great, though. I think we can shout out some of those guys like we have. Hunter Green's been great. Uh, the one thing on the pitching side I want to bring up uh, that I'm a little concerned about: Alexis Diaz. Should we be worried about him? He has not looked great really all season. He's escaped with some saves uh, so far, and uh, the strikeout rate's down. His velocity's down. He's not the same pitcher he was last season. What's going on there? Well, if we've watched Diaz over the past couple of years, we know about his issues with either walking the first batter, uh, We've joked before that it's just to make the, the task hard on himself. But I I think it's just that, Don, he walks a very fine line when he is consistently walking guys or giving up hits, letting guys get on base. And when he's not, like, really perfect after that, when he doesn't lock in, he is prone to giving up runs. And that's, you know, that's that's a huge baseball adage, of course, is, like, your bullpen can't be walking, walking guys because – then you're kind of just, you know, putting more runners on the base pass in a time where you can't have anybody score. Like, and I don't know, man, I'm, I am kind of worried about it. Um, they've seemed to not really want to pitch Diaz in any other inning other than the ninth, maybe a couple times, but it's not really looked that good. Um, I don't, I, I don't want to think that he's hurt just because it makes me like it would it would worry me that they continue to throw out a pitcher who might have been hurt. But, Rob, like, just give me something other than just general feelings about, <laughs> about Alexis Diaz. Like, what, what are you seeing, my man? Uh, the dude plays the fire and he gets burned more often than not, it seems like. That's kind of my general consensus of what's going on right now. Um, 
was it the Giants game where it was the, did he walk the bases full or the bases got full? And I think it was the or was it the first game of the Arizona series? I I've, I've been yeah, listening. To yeah, the base like the game they should have won. Then Arizona hit. I think it was Newman hit the double to walk it off. Uh, that was a game they should have had in their hip pocket. Diaz blew that one. So, uh, yeah, basically my my overall thoughts are he he plays with fire quite a bit. We've seen it all throughout his Reds career so far, and it's come back to burn him pretty hot this year. So, yeah. Yeah, hopefully he can get that figured out. If let's say it's just it just keeps going poorly, uh, and it's specific to Alexis Diaz. Who is your top choice to say replace him as uh, the team's closer? Maybe Fernando Cruz, maybe Buck Farmer, maybe Brett. I would have said Cruz before this week, where he That's like, true. Had two like outings where he gave up runs and. If you're a closer, like that's just not an option. You just can't yeah. give up runs. Like I, I hate to be that guy, but you can't do it. Um, I mean, I would kind of wonder if Sims, you put Sims in that role. Yeah. Uh, like he's been fairly decent this year. He's got seven know. holds this year so far. He has as many holds as Diaz does saves. Yeah. I've Sims has been really good for like most of his outings, and then he does one like really stupid pitch that screws him. Did you guys notice that in his last outing? He was getting all these swing and misses with the slider. Uh, and then, boom! Fastball down the middle, home run, three run Jack. You know, game over. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't Maybe. know if that's on the catcher or if they just got to work on sequencing better. Uh, but guys are sitting fastball like he's got nasty stuff. Uh, you know, his stats don't look great. And same with Alexis Diaz, he's also got nasty stuff, and the stats don't look great because of a couple bad outings. But uh, I'd lean towards Sims if you can get him consistent. Uh, and I think Cruz still works as a good, like, kind of stopper, uh, eighth inning kind of guy. Uh, you know, but he really, again, Cruz, you're just kind of hoping he gets ahead uh, so that he can use the the, uh, the splitter. If he falls behind guys and he just has to whip them the fastball and the cutter in there, it's good, but it's not great. I don't have his stats in front of me, but maybe if push comes to shove, he call up, like, Tony Santion and stick him in there and see what he can do. I guess he's pitching very well for Louisville. You still have Sam Mall sitting down there too, for whatever reason as well. Sam Mall came up and replaced uh, Nick Lodolo on the roster. Oh, uh, that's right, he did. Yeah, I've another injury. Nick Lodolo in the uh, the IL today or yeah. Wednesday, as you're listening. So, who are they going to call up to replace like Lodolo in the rotation? Then you think Ma- they'd try Martinez? To get- Martinez. Oh, so, yeah, I guess so. Then, then, yeah, then he's then on twice, relatively. Twice yeah, Martinez wasn't expecting to make a start. So I think he's going to be on short rest. So he's probably just going to pitch like three innings and then it's going to be a bullpen day. Yeah. Great against the Dodgers. <laughs> against yeah. the Dodgers. Like it just, it's, you're right, Don, what you said. It could not be worse timing when you're playing against like one of the best teams in baseball. Like it's, it's just shit timing to be honest. And well, and the, yeah. So the, the comment there is the offense absolutely has to start picking it up because we've been losing these games in, in low scoring games, you know, one, Two to one today. Uh, you know all these low scoring games we're losing. Uh, it's so frustrating because the pitching really does get you there in a series against the Dodgers, and especially if we think our pitching might not be there. With you know Martinez make a start, the bullpen maybe starts to get worn down a little bit. Uh, although a couple back to back, you know long outings from our starters helps. Uh, thank you, you know, Abbott and Green. But yep. uh, we need to start winning games like like if we want to we're not going to win a game against this Dodgers series two to one. We're going to have to win a game like nine to eight. You know, it's not going to we it's not going to be a pitcher's duel. Uh, we're going to have to hope and I, I, you know I I think the more likely outcome is like something like eight to one and we lose. Uh, yeah, but and that's it. I, I was so optimistic until this last stretch here and and. The pessimism has gotten to me. I, I'm going to try not to be as irrational on Twitter and whatnot, but it's it's tough, man. We we were so we we're optimistic and we had expectations, and that's when you get hurt the most, huh? Mm-hmm. I, I, I look I'm looking at another another record stat because that's that's I guess that's just what I like. You you did say Don uh, one in ten in one run games, not great. Another one that's not great right now when you're considering we're going to play against NL West teams for the next ten games. Uh, the Reds are right now uh, three and nine against NL West teams. Mm. Uh, not not good, uh, not ideal. And that's they won't play the Rockies at all in this stretch. 
and they still have will have the Giants coming up at home. But I, Rob, there is some silver lining in that that they, they get all these NLS teams out of the way, like kind of this early. So yep. if you wanted to be optimistic, maybe that's your chance. But I, I like Don, I agree with you. I like we're the most positive. We're, we try to be the most positive people on the block, and it, it's. It's hard right now, man. And they're a young team. I know they're injured. I know, like, you know, the sophomore slump is a thing. But if you know, if they're gonna be a good playoff team, they gotta just show us. They they have to show us. They have to start winning some of these games. And yeah. I, yeah. I I think the fun of last year was that you know they didn't have expectations. People just kind of expected them to be maybe a little bit better than the year before, and they were like markedly better. And I think you know that's the Kurtz is supposed to right now. I will say the benefit of this happening early in the season, especially after a pretty decent start, is that we're not that far out of it. You know, when you look at when you when you take 12 losses out of 14 games in and of itself, like that sounds like it's going to completely ruin the season. But considering we were over 500 at that point and, you know, there's a lot of middling teams at this point still. Uh, like you said, we're still only two and a half games out of the wild card. Obviously a ton of baseball to go. But, you know, if you have a if you're like hovering around 500, uh, maybe even slightly below, and then a stretch like this happens, like later in the season too. Man, you could be ten games under uh, very quickly, and and that starts to look pretty bleak because you need to get back to five hundred quickly, and then you need to start getting five or six games over five hundred uh, to even have a prayer. We got a lot of time to get back there. Uh, you know, as the days go on, it's it's not it, you know, as we found out last year, every single game does matter. So you can't really just like write off losses. But we do have time to figure it out, uh, and I think that's what the the managers and, and the and crawl the owners continue to stress, uh, which is frustrating for fans. Fans want to see change. They want to see David Bell get fired. They want to see the hitting coach get fired. Uh, they want to see all these changes, and I don't think that's the answer, especially not yet. Uh, it's not going to happen right now either. Like, yeah, it, it just wouldn't. And. Sorry to ruin anyone that was hoping for that, but David Bell's not getting fired yet. Uh, none of that's going to happen. They're they're going to, especially honestly, especially because they can blame this on like injuries and such. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like like, gonna... like I said, it's not it's not a David Bell problem. It's yeah, yeah, you know, they're not playing with a full deck. Like I keep saying. Yeah, well, and then they're not going to fire the hitting coach either because Joel McKeithen flew down to the Dominican this offseason to work with L.A. De La Cruz, and look at what it has given the Reds. Like, yeah. you know, he has become a much better hitter, much di more disciplined hitter right now, and it's just not translating for the rest of the guys. But, at, like, I I could think – I think you can credit both – well, through all three of Ellie himself, Juan Soto, and Joel McKeithen with improving – Ellie this year and make, he's looked like a much better hitter at the plate. So Steve, you know, one thing I thought was really cool about Ellie uh, that we learned recently as the newest uh, StatCast data point came out, the bat speed. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Ellie, of course, leads the team uh, in aggregate. And I'm pretty sure even if you use his weaker side, uh, just the right side, uh, something like the average uh, in the MLB was like 71 or 72. And, uh, Ellie's average is over, is in the high 70s. Uh, a hard swing is considered 75. So I think it was uh, young, Giancarlo Stanton averages like 80, which is just insane. Uh, but I was a little disappointed that most of our team was kind of average or below average. Uh, some of that was a little surprising. Like Christian Encarnacion Strand, I think, was below average. Although he has been dealing with injury, uh, that could be part of it. But did you guys think the bat speed data was pretty interesting? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't get a chance to look at it, but like it, it is like it, what you told me is not very surprising. Just watching this team, like, uh, it, and it's it's shown this year that Ellie has kind of been the only like real over the top producer. Like, and I have a feeling that Candelaria will come around, that Steer Steer will come around, but um, I've just been very impressed with Ellie this year. How he's look at it. Like if you look at all the outs that Steer's making, like most of them are like hard hit balls, like right to the fielder. Like he's making con like solid contact with the ball consistently. He just can't find the gap or get it over the infield. Well, that was what was happening with uh, you said Steer, right? Yeah. But uh, Stevenson had that problem early in the season, and now he kind of he 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 finally got some hits to fall, and 
Man, it, I think it'll all come together a little bit. Uh, and look, especially with at this point, we might not be a playoff team. My hopes of a 90-win season and whatnot, probably they're not looking great. Uh, we have to really turn it around. But this team is going to give us a good stretch. I think they're going to get back to 500, and they're going to maybe hang out there. Uh, they're going to be a team that keeps it interesting. And this is a brutal stretch, no doubt. But we're going to get through it. Uh, it's not going to last. I, there's just no way. It, this team is too talented. And baseball is a cyclical, cyclical sport. You know, even the worst teams kind of have swings where they're worse or, you know, above or below average. Water will find its level, right? We're getting rid of the peaks and valleys, right? Right, Steve? <laughs> oh, kill me. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I am excited, though, about next Saturday. Um, that will yeah. Be a lot of fun. Steve, you're going to be back in Cincinnati doing a little bachelor party for uh, – Get the, get the gang together. I love it. Um, Rob and I will both be there. We are very excited. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, if I am getting married this year, um, uh, unfortunately, right in October, where I've gotten some shit for, don't you think the Reds are going to be in the playoffs? Why'd you get? <laughs> why'd you schedule your wedding for October? I was like, I don't know, man. I scheduled this in 2022. It didn't really look that, like that. it was going to happen that soon. But but anyway, so. Like you said, we uh, we are going to go to the game. We've got uh, the seats in the Valley Sports Club. So if you do happen to be there and you want to see us three fine gentlemen in, mm. enjoying a Reds game, come on over and say hi. Uh, I, I do want to try and post a picture there if you guys are all right with that. Because, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, in this era of Twitter and face faceless, nameless media, I like to show that we have a an actual personable presence behind – uh, you know, this popular social media page that we all three run. So, you know, I, I like to share pictures of us. I shared a picture of myself uh, at the game last night on at ATBBTTR on Twitter. I have gotten a little bit lax the days ago with the win videos. I, I promise they will come back. I uh, am just been trying a whole to... lot of winning that state has been a whole lot yeah. of winning. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of thought that I was like, you know, what if I post a win video after we just lost the 12 of the, previous 13 games i don't know if that would really go over that well but you know yeah you still got to do it sometimes right that so, reminds me uh did you notice uh one of our losses in that tough stretch tyler stevenson hit a home run in like the ninth inning to go from like eight, eight to nothing to eight to one or something and mm -hmm. uh he's still really quick just like really quick and subtle he did he still did the the one finger up and the little <laughs> clap for the wings what's uh, up brother he just did yeah. it real subtle and I was wondering, do they even like? Do they bother throwing the Viking helmet on? I think they do. I think they still do the Viking think helmet. They did, you know. Yeah. In the ninth well, inning, I of saw the Mike eight run game. I saw Mike Ford get got to wear it. So, but uh, I mean, that was a tie to tie the game at that point. But yeah, yeah. Um, I did kind of wonder about that. I was like, oh, it's kind of funny. Maybe we need a Viking new, uh, celebration. We need to leave that one in 2023. Yeah, I was wondering to that too. It was like we couldn't come Change up with anything. The this is a Luis Sessa idea. That man is like not even in Major League Baseball right now. Like, it's right. It's just got bad juju around it. We got to come we up. We need with something. something to change the vibes. Uh, give me, maybe Steer got the mustache going. That was good. Uh, that was fun. Ben, Benson shaved, and that doesn't seem to have helped. Uh, we need. We need something. We need uh, just the just the classic, you know, just team head shave. There you go. Yeah. Do the Steve, mohawk. Yeah, yeah we, we got to get the. Head. The wake up the bats memes and uh, doing all the seance and this is good. Steve, I want to say like you, I am also undefeated this year in games uh, watching the Reds live. I think the Reds are four and zero in games that I've been in attendance. So I like our chances for next Saturday, buddy. Wow, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. hey, Cincinnati Reds, I know you are listening to this podcast. Uh, you, I presented you with information that uh, two members of this podcast are undefeated when we attend mm. games. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying if, tickets. if you would like to win more baseball games, maybe you consider throwing us a vote. I don't know. <laughs> just a little something. I like I it. Still haven't gotten that one random guy on Twitter's hat, even though he like continues to mm -hmm. tweet at you. So um, uh, I, I had a guy from the Reds ticket office call me, leave me a voicemail the other day asking about ticket packages. So maybe I can just hit him back up and say, you know, listen to, you know, minute 54 <laughs> of the podcast and say, you know what, I've got, you know, two guys here who are undefeated when we're in attendance. So we'll get the people going. We'll start some chance. Any idea who's in line to uh, pitch? Can we, can we project that out? Um, they're saying uh, I have the schedule pulled up now. Uh, Saturday, May 25th against the Dodgers. 
It's a Fox game, and they're saying Hunter Green is the projected starter. Green nice. Day. All right. Nice. Yeah. And and we get a Reds phone wallet for being in attendance. Wow. wow. Yeah. Pretty exciting. I know phone wallets are so 2024. I know those are really <laughs> If the Dodgers pitching rotation holds true, it could be Yamamoto versus Green that Saturday mm. on Fox. Big Fox. Yeah. That, Big uh, Fox. Capital F-O-X Fox. Well, I, I, anyway. I have a I have enjoyed uh, being on National Fox this year uh, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, yeah. I kind of enjoy the change. I mean, I know we lost the Giants game, but that uh, that Rangers game was pretty fun. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, I like hearing Adam Amin uh, on, the, on the – well, no, it wasn't Adam Amin. It was someone else. But Benetti was on the call this past weekend, so I did enjoy that. That was a good one. I like Benetti. Uh, well, anyway, boys, I'm looking forward to watching this Bearcat series this weekend, uh, or this kind of early weekend. Uh, I'm excited to see them play in the Big 12 tournament as well and make a run at the NCAA uh, College World Series itself. So, hey, anything can happen. Let's let's make sure to support the team in Cincinnati that actually wins games. Uh, and, you know, hey, maybe the Reds will pick up some of that luck. Just to be clear, if you're choosing to support a college baseball team in Cincinnati, make sure it's the Bearcats and not the Xavier Musketeers because they're not good. Yes, Boo. we hate them. <laughs> Down with Xavier. Look at what we're wearing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go Cats. So, hey, we will hopefully come to you again uh, shortly after. Or Steve, are we going to try to do a podcast while you're in town? I would like to if you guys are interested. Yeah, we should. I I'm say bring, absolutely. You want so, a person. I'm gonna bring the sticks. Why not? I'll, I'll bring the I'll, I'll bring the recording equipment. We will not wait as long as we did between last two episodes. Yeah. Uh, even if the Reds are still awful, we'll just make fun of the Reds even more. Uh, we'll find some bits to do, uh, and it'll be fun to do one in person, Steve. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and uh, enjoying a game. Uh, well, let's say enjoying uh, you know the camaraderie and the beer, uh, and maybe oh, the game will go well. The tailgate the fraternity, will be, if you will. The, yeah. the tailgate will be undefeated. Yes, the fraternity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, that's that's what we need. That's what we're, we're trying to do as Reds fans, you know, just just win the party. Don't <laughs> not really worry party. about what's going on on the field. All right, boys. So whichever Cincinnati sports team you're supporting this weekend uh, or baseball team, let's uh, let's let's win a few. Just just a few, maybe. Come on. Just give, give just, me some. Just, just get my, Win them all. Fuck it. Get need great. My, need my team to win some damn games, like that meme is saying. Yeah. Damn. All right, boys. Well, I'm going to get going here. Any final thoughts? Go Bearcats, man. Big series yeah, against the there Sooners. There we Root go. for it, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, uh, going to be a great time at UC Baseball Stadium. If you, get a, if you have not been to a game yet and you live in the Cincinnati area, go. It's actually a pretty good time. College baseball games are completely different than minor league games or any major league baseball games. It's uh, definitely a different atmosphere. They're expecting a good crowd this weekend. Uh, I'm not getting paid by the University of Cincinnati to say this. I'm just saying this out of my heart as a Bearcats fan. Mm. Make the effort. If, you can, if you're can, if you able to go, go support the boys. It really is a great place to watch a game. No, no doubt. No as doubt. a fan of baseball. Not a bad team now, so I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. And it's their stadium. There you go. Yeah, they do. That'll, that'll do it for this edition of Reds Country Radio. We'll come back to you all together in person in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it. Go Red Legs. Go Reds, baby. Go Bearcats. Bearcats. Go Bearcats. Go Cincinnati. Mm.